One of these men was the defendant in the most famous court trial of this century. What is your name, please? My name is John Thomas Scopes. What is your name, please? My name is John Thomas Scopes. What is your name, please? My name is John Thomas Scopes. Two of these people are imposters. Only one is the real John Thomas Scopes and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. And now, here is our host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much. Welcome once again to To Tell the Truth, brought to you this week by Tristan Nasal Mist for relief of sinus congestion and head cold misery. Now may I introduce our panel. First, Mr. Tom Poston. Then, Miss Kitty Carlisle. Next, Mr. Don Amici. And finally, Miss Polly Bergen. And an added welcome to our mystery guest, Mr. Bob Hope. <laughs> now, panel, will you please open your envelope, take out your affidavit cards, and follow along as I read. was the defendant in the famous monkey trial, which stirred the country in 1925. It was called the monkey trial because it was a legal test of a Tennessee statute forbidding teaching Darwin's theory of evolution. Although I am not a native of Tennessee, I was a high school teacher in the state at the time. The prosecuting attorney was the three-time presidential candidate, William Jennings Bryan, and defending me was the brilliant trial lawyer, Clarence Darrow. The trial was the subject of a recent hit Broadway play, now made into a motion picture. Its title, Inherit the Wind, signed John Thomas Scopes. <laughs> all right, panel, you heard these three distinguished gentlemen all claiming to be John Thomas Scopes of the famous Scopes trial. Let's begin this questioning with Tom Poston. Tom? Thank you, bud. Uh, Mr. Scopes, number three, I wonder, could you tell us who directed the Broadway play, Inherit the Wind? I don't know who directed do you, it. Do you happen to know number two? No, I don't remember. Number one, maybe you would remember who directed the Broadway play, Inherit the Wind. No, I, I did not see the play. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Number two, uh, who played the part of Mr. Bryan on Broadway? Do you happen to remember that? I believe it was Abe Begley. Thank you. Number two, could I ask you what color were the real Mr. Darrow's suspenders? A pink. Number three, do you agree with that? I don't remember. Uh, number, number two, could you tell me how did you happen to get uh, uh, counsel? Uh, how did Mr. Darrow happen to defend you? I believe William Jennings Bryan offered the prosecution help. And Darrow, being an old opponent of his, thought he'd uh, take up the challenge. I see. Thank you. Kitty? Uh, number three, who played Darrow in Inherit the Wind? In the movie or the play? In the play. In the play, a Muni, Paul Muni. Uh, number one, can you tell me how this whole thing started? The trial? What, <laughs> what touched it off? Well, there was a law passed in the state of Tennessee forbidding the teaching of anything contradictory to the teaching of the Bible as to the origin of man. Thank you. Number two, can you tell me what animal has been described as the thing that Mr. Darwin... By the way, how, where did Mr. Darwin get his data? Do you know how did long he did it take... get his what? The data for um, uh, his, his famous book. Well, the man named Marshall. Number three, how long did it take him? Don Amici. Uh, Don? Number two, where did uh, uh, Darrow come from? Chicago. Uh, number three, what time of the year was this trial? In July. Uh, number one, how long did it last? About 11 days. Uh, number uh, two, how long were you out of teaching? I was out since May 25th. Until when? 
I never went back. <laughs> number uh, number three. Number three. What other what other uh, uh, trial was uh, Clarence Darrow famous for? Uh, the uh, trial in Chicago that uh, the two the Frank uh, boys, I believe. Uh, number one. Where, Polly? Uh, Thanks, number one. What was the outcome of the trial? <laughs> I was found guilty and fined one hundred dollars. Uh, number three, did you pay the money? No. Uh, number two, did you pay the money? No. And why not? Supreme Court ruled it out. I see. Uh, number one, who plays Mr. Darrow in the movie? Uh, number two, do you know? No, I'm not Tracy. I beg your pardon? Spencer Tracy. Uh, number three, what was the basic... Uh, argument in the difference between the, uh, Darrow's uh, defense and uh, uh, Brian's uh, prosecution. Uh, if I understand you correctly, Brian was trying to uphold what he interpreted as the origin of a man in the Bible. Mm -hmm. That's about it. We have to leave the other side of it in abeyance at the moment because it's time to vote and mark your ballots. If you will, please, panel, without consultation, mark them. And when you do so, vote for number one, number two, or number three. The team of challengers will, of course, get the usual $250 for every incorrect vote. Everyone voted? Okay, Tom, for whom did you vote? Uh, Bud, I voted for number three. Uh, I thought that number two answered uh, a lot of questions very, very well, but for Perhaps it was because he was so carefully briefed by the experts here on teaching people to lie. <laughs> <laughs> Kitty, which one did you select? I voted for number three. I felt that number one was a beat young, and number two answered beautifully, but number three had the kind of a bulldog, courageous look of a man who would do this, and I must say it's a great honor to meet whichever one is Mr. Yeah. Scopes. <laughs> Don? Your vote? I voted for number three for the uh, reasons that Tom and Kitty gave. <laughs> <laughs> You're riding their coattails, eh? All right, Polly, for reasons of your own? Uh, I will have to disqualify myself. Oh. Um, what? <laughs> no, I wasn't at the trial. Kitty. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> but I recently read an article, uh, and in the article was a picture of Mr. Scopes returning and looking at the sign of the place in Tennessee where the famous trial took place, and I'm fairly sure that I recognize Mr. Scopes from the picture. Okay, Polly, we'll disqualify your vote then. That will count as a wrong vote when we come to totaling up the score. All right, but there I mean, we... You do understand that I... Perfectly. Knew. You I... weren't there. Yes. And uh, you... <laughs> All right. Now, with our mind made up, let's see how yours is as we discover which one of these gentlemen is the real John Thomas Scopes of the famous... Scopes trial. Will the real John Thomas Scopes please stand up? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> well, well done, It's panel. like meeting an historical monument. It really is. <laughs> Monster, did you say? I said historical <laughs> monument. <laughs> <laughs> Monument sounds almost as bad, doesn't it, in its own way? But it wasn't meant that way, that I'm sure. All right, about you Kitty other didn't gentlemen. mean that you were there your own age. She meant like a teenager or something. Oh, I like understand. Yes, sure. Thank you. Yes, like you were in your early 20s. Yes. Like yeah. you meant. I'd like to ask Polly who she thought Mr. Scopes was. Uh, who did you think Mr. Scopes no, was? No, I had a thought. <laughs> she did. All right. Number one, did you tell us your real name and what you really do, please? My name is Darrow. Charles Darrow, <laughs> and I work for the New York Telephone Company. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Darrow. <laughs> and number two, your real name and what you do, please. I'm an insurance agent for the Ethnic Casualty Insurance Company, and my name is William Jennings Brown. Oh, no! <laughs> Wow, Tom there's a says, I'll be a monkey's uncle. <laughs> <laughs> now they're casting these things. <laughs> well, gentlemen, thanks to Polly's disqualification, it totals up to only one, but still one incorrect vote at $250 from Dristan. And on your way out, a gift package of all of the fine products 
from the makers of Dristan. Thank you very much for being with us. Good night. God Good bless. Night. The next team of challengers now. What is your name, please? My name is Debbie Drake. What is your name, please? My name is Debbie Drake. What is your name, please? My name is Debbie Drake. Panel, if you can put your eyeballs back in their sockets and follow along with your copies of this affidavit. I, Debbie Drake, am a television performer. My syndicated show concerns itself with keeping ladies in the proper shape. Having once operated a chain of reducing salons, I am considered an expert on diet, calories, and on figure control. As part of my 15-minute daily program, I demonstrate setting up exercises and answer questions from viewers, such as, how can I fatten up my skinny arm? How can I stop biting my nails? What is the best posture for sleeping? And what are some good exercises for flat feet? Signed, Debbie Drake. Three charming young ladies this time, panel, as you heard them all claiming to be Debbie Drake, television exercise girl. And let me start this round of questioning with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty? Kitty? <laughs> Thank you, bud. I want to say to start with that I don't think any one of them is, because these ladies must be witches and prevaricators. They couldn't tell anybody how to have figures like that. <laughs> Not anybody. They were born that way. <laughs> but I would like to ask a few questions on my own. Um, I'm not interested in skinny arms, biting my nails, or posture for sleeping, but how do you reduce your derriere, number one? <laughs> well, was it an exercise? The derriere is what the lady said, the derriere. <laughs> <laughs> Translate by, yourself. By doing a lot of reputations of a certain hip exercise. And you really think it can be done? Yes. Number two, do you have any uh, advice on skin care? You seem to have very pretty skin. Yes, I do. Of course. Do you believe in washing your face? <laughs> no, I'm serious. I think it dries it quite often. Do you? No, I do not wash my face. I cream it, you see. Don Amici. Uh, number uh, three, how many calories a day can you, uh, can you eat and, and uh, not gain weight? Well, depending on how strenuous a diet you really need to go on. I said you. Me? Yes. I like to stay within about uh, 1,000, 1,200 a day. Uh, how many calories can you eat a day and not gain weight, number one? About um, 1,800, 1,500 to 1,800. Number two? 2,000. Uh, number two, uh, how much walking would you have to do to lose one pound of weight, or what is the accepted theory of how many uh, uh, miles you must walk to lose one pound of to, weight? To lose one pound yes. of weight? Four miles. Number three? I wouldn't walk at all to lose weight. No. I'd swim. Polly? <laughs> Polly? If you don't like to walk and you can't swim, what do you do now? <laughs> Number one, what would, what would you do? I would watch the Debbie Drake show. <laughs> oh. Very good. Number two, um, this is nothing personal, <clears throat> but what's a good exercise for flat feet? Well, there are several. The best one, of course, is walking on the outside of your, on the outside of your feet and also to pick up objects with your toes, say marble. No, I don't have flat toes. It's just... <laughs> well, the, well, the picking up of marbles curves your, curves your, in, curves your uh, arch. And oh, your I see. And Tom Poston, please. Thank you. Uh, number one, do you know what the lats are? Yes, yeah, right here. Thank you. Number two, how do you make a bridge? I beg your pardon? How do you make a bridge? Oh, well, I would call, on my show, I call that the pussycat where you arch your back and you pull in your abdomen as hard as you can and then relax. Perfect for conditioning. Try it, Tom, but right now you have to vote, I'm afraid. So without consultation or doing any bridges, will you kindly mark your ballot? <laughs> and as you do so, select number one, number two, or number three. Okay. All ballots marked? No, no. No, no? Please hurry. Pretty please. There we are. Okay, Tom, for whom did you vote? Well, I voted for number one, bud. Uh, she knew where the lats were. Uh, that's right, by the way. And uh, 
I have a funny picture of Antonino Rocco or somebody doing a wrestler's pussycat in the middle of a match. Yeah. <laughs> Even though that may be what she calls it on her show, I still vote her for number one. Kitty? Well, I voted for number two. First place, I approve of her not washing her face. <laughs> and second place, uh, her voice sounded like the sort of voice that one gets instruction from on television. Oh, Don, your vote, please. I uh, voted for number one, uh, I guess principally because number two said four miles to lose one pound of weight, and number uh, three wouldn't, uh, wouldn't answer the question, and I've always understood it was approximately 36 miles that you had to walk. And Polly. Well, uh, where am I? Oh, yes. I, yes, I voted for number one. As you can see, I almost voted for number two. But uh, uh, the 2,000 calories sounded a little high to me, too. It may not be for her personally, but it would be a little high for me. Uh, it was very close between one and two. I just had a feeling that it was two, so I voted for number one. You must remember, I do an awful lot of exercise. <laughs> okay, there we have it now. The votes are in, the minds have been up, and are yours? see how well you did as we discover which one of these young ladies is the real television exercise girl. So will the real Debbie Drake please stand up. Thank you, Debbie, very much. Yes, of course. <laughs> Almost three at the end there, didn't they, huh? Oh. Number two, would you tell us your real name and what you really do? My name is Elaine DeRossi. I'm married, mother of two little girls, nurse here in New York City, and a college student. Wow. <laughs> There's a full-time schedule if I ever heard one. Oh, uh, number three, your real name and what you do, please. I'm Eileen Sharone, and I'm a housewife and a mother of a little boy, and I live here in New York City. Oh, I know her. <laughs> I know number three. You know number three? And I know her husband, Ir Irwin Sharone, very, very well. I've well, I didn't well, recognize you. At least you didn't apologize. recognize me tonight. No, I've, I've never, never seen you with so many clothes. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> We find there was only one incorrect vote, as in the first round, for $250 from Tristan, and a gift box of fine products from the makers of Tristan for each of you. Thank you very much, ladies. Good night. I hope you had fun. We did. <laughs> Panel, let's meet our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Clipper de Knockanock. What is your name, please? My name is Clifford de Knockanock. What is your name, please? My name is Clifford de Knockanock. Pay attention once again to this affidavit panel, if you will, please. I, Clifford de Knockanock, am a sergeant first class in the Eskimo Scout Battalion of the Alaska National Guard. My home is on St. Lawrence Island, which lies midway between Alaska and Siberia. I hunt and fish for a living. One day, a disabled Navy plane crash-landed on a remote part of our island. In our native skin boats, we brought the injured crew members to safety. For my part in the rescue, I was called to Washington, D.C., and was awarded gold aviator's wings by the Navy. Signed, Clifford Ignokinak. Please stall with gentlemen this time, panel, each claiming, as you heard, to be Clifford Ignokinock, Eskimo Scout. And we start this round with Polly Bergen. Polly? I knew you would, because I don't know very much about Eskimos or Alaska, but... Igloos? Igloos or anything. Number two, what is the name of the peninsula that sticks out up at the top of Alaska toward Siberia? The Aleutian Islands. I beg your pardon? The Aleutian Islands. Thank you. Number three, what is the uh, town, the name of the town that is... Furthest, uh, uh, the farthest extended on the Aleutian Islands. No. Right. I beg your pardon? No. No. Number one, do you agree with that? Yes. Uh, number three, what is the name of the big highway now that runs up through to Alaska? The uh, Alaskan Highway. I beg your pardon? The Alaskan Highway. Tom? Oh, thank you. Uh, number two, can you tell me what is flensing? I don't know. Do you happen to know number three, flensing? Flensing could mean lots of things in our language. Uh, number one, what does flensing mean? Do you happen to know? Flensing.
cleansing. I don't, I don't know. Uh, just a question. Uh, tell me, floor, number two, don't you? number two, how is leather softened traditionally by the Eskimo? Well, it's normally by, the old saying is by chewing. Thank you. Number two, could you... Mm -mm. Number Kitty? two, do you believe that Nome is the farthest north, that point where they said? No, it's not. No. Number three, uh, could you tell me um, how far is Alaska from Siberia at the closest point? Thirty-seven and a half miles, I believe. Number one, uh, the penguins uh, in the north, uh, do you see them very often? Yes. You do? Uh, number two, do you see penguins up there? Yes. And do the, is it true that the male hatches the egg? No. No, the female hatches the egg. Yes. And she sits on it how long? For about five days. Is that all? Mm-hmm. I've been misled. Well, uh, number three, what do you hunt when you hunt? What do we hunt when we hunt? Well, we hunt seal, uh, birds, game, anything like what that. What kind of game? Well, we can have reindeer, anything we want. And Don Amici. Uh, number uh, uh, one, what is the skeleton of these skin boats made of? Walrus hide. The skeleton? Uh, the framework. The framework. The framework is wood. Number two? It's made out of oak. Made out of oak. Uh, number uh, three, uh, who is the National Guard under? Uh, uh, National what branch Guard. of the service? Uh, I mean, our service now? The National Guard. Uh, under the, uh, Madam. Number one? Department of the Army. Uh, number uh, uh, two, what is the, does the temperature of the water vary at your, at your home winter and summer? Yes, it does. How much? Oh, approximately 20 degrees. That's it. For the variation of the temperature, we'll have to calm our own and write down our ballots, if you will, panel. So doing, vote, as always, for number one, or number two, or number three. Okay, has everyone marked their ballots? Fast this time, no, it looks I'm like. Ready. Tom, are you ready? No, I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm really, uh, I'm now. You're not? <laughs> I am now, yes. Okay, yes. for whom did you vote? Well, I did vote for number one, but it had to be on such a strong hunch because unless he misunderstood the question, he did say that he agreed that Nome was the farthest north in the Aleutian, in the Alaskan. Aleutian. I, I tell you, I voted for number one, but I probably made a <laughs> fool of myself. <laughs> Kitty. Well, I feel exactly the same way because I didn't vote for number one. I think it's number one. But he also, the only one who said he disagreed with the other two was number two. And that means that he's got to be the right one. But he doesn't look Alaskan to me. He looks more Chinese. <laughs> so I don't know. Don? I voted for number two, and I've been sitting here while Kitty and Tom were answering, trying to figure out why, and I still haven't figured it out. <laughs> and Polly? Well, I voted for number two. I don't know the furthest town on, out on the Aleutian uh, Atoll, but I don't think it's no. Uh, I didn't know the name of it, but uh, they both just happened to give me a name that I am familiar with, and I, I don't believe that's right, so I voted for number two, and I'll probably give up the fact that I know very little about geography. <laughs> All right, let's find out whether you do or not. We'll discover right now which of these three gentlemen is the brave young man who was decorated in Washington and is the real Eskimo scout. The Willa Real, Clifford Iknokinok. Please stand up. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. You may be seated. And now, uh, let's find out about number two, who got all the votes. First time anybody's really fooled the panel tonight. Uh, right. What is your real name and what do you do? My name is Dick Comini. I'm from Hawaii. I own the DK Photo Supply a camera shop in New York City. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. And number three, your real name and what do you really do? My name is Bernard Orris. I am the manager of the Luau Quad Under on 57th Street and 1st Avenue. <laughs> what an easy question. Well, we thank you, gentlemen, and we checked to find that this time there were one, two, three incorrect votes at $250 each for a grand total of $750 from Dristan and the gift package of all of the fine products made by the makers of Dristan. Thank you so much for being with us. Good night and good luck.
But you have a question? Yes, I just wanted to know, is Nome the furthest out? I know we're in a hurry. I don't know. Is it? Is, is, uh, where is Mr. Nome? Oh, yeah, Nome? Yes, it is one of the furthest, I believe. One of the, the my kid told me today. No, one, one of the mile. first. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, and my best to the penguins of the North Pole. <laughs> Well, that's all we have time for tonight. Good night, panel. Good night, Bud. Good night. Bud Collier saying good night for Dristan and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everyone. To Tell the Truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production in association with the CBS Television Network. This week's show has been brought to you by Dristan Decongestant Cough Medicine. Stop coughing due to cold or bronchial irritation. This is Roger Foster saying good night from Tell the Truth. The preceding program was pre-recorded.